Good morning, everyone. Y'all glad to be here today? Amen. It is always good to be in God's house, to be able to worship Him. And boy, I tell you what, I was just thinking about, I, I can't help to think about this every week, and that is, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. And, and uh, this week, I was thinking about, you know, I was watching our staff, and, and uh, it's just funny, one of, the, one of the interns, they don't even know I know this, but I, they were overheard saying to someone, they said, you know, because we're back in town, we've been gone for several weeks, and, and uh, they said, wow, <clears throat> when Pastor Mark's in town, there's a lot more flurry of activity going on around here. So anyway, so, <clears throat> I'm not sure if that was a compliment or not, but anyway, but I, I really just want to say to our staff, we have the most amazing staff in the entire country, just an incredible group of people, all of our executive team, all of our pastors, all the support staff, we thank you guys so much, we love you. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, I don't know if you'd realize this or not, but Freedom Fest is Friday night, y'all ready to go? Just some housekeeping notes, some things that you need to know, that you need to be aware of. Okay, if you're one of our, how are our volunteers for Freedom Fest? Can I see your hand? You guys are awesome. Listen, here's what we're going to do. We did, we've been doing this for several years now. It works out great. Uh, we, and again, you're going to have to park a little further away. And by the way, if, if you're not a volunteer but just would like to help us with parking, uh, you can do the same thing. Even if you're, if you're planning on being here and you didn't volunteer for anything, go ahead and park with our volunteers. It would really help us out because we need all the parking that we can get on this side of the property. So if you're a volunteer, instead of turning in the driveway here, if you'll go all the way past the church on 3918, down around the corner, around the curb, you'll come, uh, once you kind of get back the pa behind the church here, you'll come to a black pipe fence, and that's part of the church property. It's on the back side of the church lake there. If you will pull in there and park, we're going to be running a shuttle service back and forth between cars. I'm talking about not, just be, not only before, we'll also do it afterwards as well to try and get you back and forth so you don't have to do the big walk across the field, but it would help us out tremendously if you guys will park there. Y'all good with that? Okay, so I've got a lot more information for you too. So uh, let, me, let me tell you this as well, uh, and I think this is very important. Uh, so if, you're, if you are going to our church here, you're planning on coming, and you plan for your children to be on the water slides. Y'all hearing me? If you're planning on for them to be on water slides, uh, you have every person who comes on the property has to sign a waiver. We do this every single year. You have to sign a waiver before you can get on those water slides. Here's one of the things we can help you with. We can fast track you through that waiver process. And here, all you have to do is go online at youbelongatlife.org. I'm not sure exactly where on that website. Slash Freedom Fest. If you'll go there, there's a waiver form. You can download it, fill it out. We'll have an express line just for you guys. You walk straight through, turn your form in, and be gone. I, I just think that's great. All right, so. Uh, also, let me just tell you this, because when you get here, the t-shirts, we'll start handing the t-shirts out at 3.30, if you're one of our volunteers. Now listen, you didn't volunteer, don't show up at the t-shirt table, you're not getting one. So anyway, <laughs> but for our volunteers, they, I, I've seen, I wish we had brought one. They are the best looking t-shirts I think we have ever done, and we've done some amazing ones. And so I'm real excited about them. Uh, they'll start handing those out at 3.30. You can go to the volunteer table at 3.30. But here's what you need to know, at 4 o'clock, they're shutting that down for a short period of time. And I'd like for every one of you to come meet us in the big tent. You'll see it, okay? Come meet us in the big tent at 4 o'clock sharp. Y'all know how we are, right? I mean, I always sit there and look at my phone in 10, 9, 8, 7. At 4 o'clock sharp, we're going to spend some time. We're going to pump you up, and then we're going to go out, and we're going to volunteer. We're going to serve our community, but we're going to pray for all those people who are going to come on our property. And we'd love to have every one of you come and be a part of prayer time at 4 o'clock in the big tent, all right? But here's what you need to know about that. Because you're going to have one of the t-shirts on, they're going to recognize you as a representative of Life Fellowship. Here's what We have a team that night who is our, our prayer team to pray with people on that night. But listen, if you have a shirt on, you're on the prayer team. I'm just telling you. And so listen, if you're, if you're scared of praying with someone, listen, this is a great time to get over it. So, <laughs> so I, I, don't be afraid of that. Listen, we, all, we can all pray. You're a believer in Jesus Christ. He hears you. And you don't have to worry about what kind of words you stumble over. Pray. He hears you. And by the way, let me tell you something. Not only does he hear you, he knows your heart. 
And even if you stumble over your words, he knows what your heart is. So pray with people. So every one of you are on the prayer team. Don't be afraid of that. And so we're going to encourage people all night long. If you need to find someone to talk to, find someone with a shirt. But they would love to talk with you. They'd love to pray with you. And if you do struggle with it just a little bit, look, look around. There'll be other people with shirts on. Hey, I've got so-and-so. This is so-and-so. And they're needing prayer. Would you help pray with us tonight? And they'll come pray with you. All right? Y'all good? All right. All right. And... Let me say this, one last thing, I think I've got everything on my list, I hope I didn't miss anything, just looking over here to make sure they don't say, oh, you forgot this, all right, th I think I got everything. Uh, uh, the other thing you can do for us on that night is, hey, listen, pray for Micah, we have Micah McElveen, who's coming in from Alabama, who's going to be giving his testimony that night, he'll be back next Sunday morning to speak in our Sunday morning services, he's got one of the most amazing testimonies of anyone I've ever met, uh, God literally healed him set him free and I don't, I don't want to tell you his whole story I'll tell you this part uh, in Florida he was slated to be the next he was slated to be the white Deion Sanders where he, he could play almost every sport he had an, a tragic accident where he lost hurt him, was, they were afraid he was going to be a paraplegic for the rest of his life God healed him and got a hold of his life and now he's doing one of the most amazing ministries that you'll ever see in your life and so he's going to come talk about that this weekend so I want you to come back next weekend after Freedom Fest some of you I know how some of you are you know you show up and you go well there was music and uh, you know there was they, they exchanged money for food so there you know there was an offering and uh, you know and and there was a message so we don't have to come to church this weekend no come back next weekend you're gonna hear an amazing story from an amazing guy I hope you'll come back next weekend all right y'all good all right all right if you have your Bible I'd like for you to turn to a couple of passages of Scripture again Eventually, at the end of the message today, we're going to end up in Proverbs chapter 30. Why in Proverbs 30? Someone tell me real quick. Today is June 30th. Hey, I heard this guy right here first. Here's a $30 gift certificate to Olive Tree. Give it to someone that you would love to bless. Who would like to be this gentleman's friend today? All right. So, Proverbs chapter 30, and then if you want to get ahead, if you want to uh, look at another passage of Scripture with me, if you'll turn over to the book of Colossians chapter 3. We're in a series called Study. I don't know about you, I have enjoyed this series. And I've had so many people who've come and given me interactions about this, about what God's doing in their life, what they're reading. I had someone this morning come up and they said, Pastor, I, this morning I got up and I read uh, Psalms 30. And I said, boy, that's great. I said, did you mean Proverbs 30? He goes, yeah, what did I say? So anyway, so... Proverbs 30, and so I just want us to all get to the place where we're having a relationship with God, where we're spending time with God. Uh, the, the time that you spend with God is going to directly equate back into your life of where you begin to live, not just having a life, but having an abundance of life. In other words, I'm talking about having a relationship with someone. The reason why marriages fail is because we stop having the relationship. Are, are y'all listening to me? Again, this is not a marriage message, but listen to me. What happens is in the marriage, we get comfortable with one another, and then we stop spending time with one another, and then we go, eventually something happens, and we go, well, I, you know, I used to be in love with this person. I don't know what happened. I just don't feel like I'm in love with them anymore. Okay, the, the problem came at the moment you stop spending time talking to one another, hanging out with one another, dating one another, right? Yeah. Communicating with one another. That's where marriages fail. And so I want to just challenge you. You've got to spend time in your marriage, but... In the same sense as a believer, although he will never leave you, let me say it another way, he will never divorce you. That's great news. Uh, we, can, we, can have a we can have a non-existent relationship with a relational God. In other words, you need to spend time with him. And you have to be, you have to be intentional. You have to do it on purpose. That's why we call it discipline. Okay, let me help you with this. Uh, I'm in my 50s now. I've been spending time with the Lord for over 40 years because that was something my parents instilled with us when I was a little small child. I've been spending time with the Lord for over 40 years, and to this day, this will be the most encouraging word you hear all morning, I still struggle with the discipline of spending time with God. Are you all okay with me telling you the truth? Because it is a discipline. Let me say it another way. It's a lifelong discipline. Now, I'm not saying I, that I don't spend time with the Lord. I do. But I have to discipline my body. I have to discipline myself to do it. And if you ever get to the point where I'm not doing it, I just, you know, I just don't know. It don't, doesn't mean as much to me anymore. It's because you're not doing it. You're not, you're not choosing to make the time to do it. Y'all good? So here's the question I'm asking in this series, and that is, 
What does studying the Word of God do for me? And so the, another way to actually say that is, what's the benefit? Because everyone in America today, we want to know what the benefit of it is. And we think if there's no benefit, I'm not going to do it. So I just want to challenge you about that just real quick. I do believe that God blesses his people. I do believe that God prospers his people. I do believe that. But let me ask you a question. What if God, for everything that God has already done, is, is that enough? Or do you have to have one more thing? So my challenge to you is don't do it to get one more thing. Do it because you love him and know that he's going to bless you in, in spite of it. Let me, let me say it in other words. He's going to do it in spite of you. Right? So listen, we need to be in God's word. We need to get God's blessings. And the way we do that is we need to spend time with him. So here's the, here's the four things that I've already given you. And I'm not going to spend a long time on it. But here's the four points I've given you in this series. And I'm going to give you point five today. And that is we need to gather truth. That's what studying the word of God does. It gathers truth. The more I read, the more truths I gather to myself. The more that I gather truth to myself, the more that it develops truth. And I would say it like this. The more I read God's word, the more I realize his position on things. The more I understand his doctrine on things, the more I begin to understand his love for me. So it develops truth, it develops doctrine in my life. Number three, it deepens truth in me. In other words, the more I understand his doctrines, the more I, it deepens me and real, makes me want to fall more in love with him because he's done so much for me, apart from myself. I never deserve for God to do these things. I'm, I, listen, inviting Jesus in your heart does not make you deserving of his love. But what makes, listen, I hope you'll catch this, the most amazing truth you'll ever get. Uh, what makes me, listen, you know what makes me deserving of his love? Because he loved me. Not because I deserved it. He just loved me first. Let me say it another way, God loves people. For God so loved the world, whole world, all of you. God loves you. Well, pastor, you don't know what I've done. You're right, I don't know what you've done, but you don't know what I've done. But here's, here's the amazing truth in this. Even though I've done some things that don't deserve God's love, he still loves me, still cares for me. In that while I was still a sinner, Romans 5, 8, Christ died for me. Are y'all hearing me? So listen, it has nothing to do with me. He loved you that much. Why not deepen it? Why not get closer to him? Here's number four. Again, spending time in God's word, studying God's word. Shields me from the world and the wicked one. Uh, I just, I just want to hit this. I think it's so important we understand the enemy has plans for your life. And even though you know Jesus as your Savior, that does not eliminate Satan coming and tempting you. It does not eliminate Satan coming and trying to destroy you, to kill you. In fact, listen, he will spend more time on Christians than he will the world. I hope you're catching this because here's what we think. We become a Christian and Satan's just going to leave us alone. No! You become a Christian, he's going to come at you more. Well, how do I face Satan? I take this word and say, it is written. And I remind him he must flee from me. Does that make sense? So it shields us from the world and the wicked one. Here's number five, and here's what I want to talk about today. It builds my faith. Now, the disciples asked this amazing question. They say, came to Jesus and they said, Lord, increase our faith. Watch, watch this. This is really good because typically people who struggle with faith issues think that they're the only one who's ever struggled with faith issues, trusting the Lord, right? Watch this, watch this. How many of you have ever struggled in your life with faith issues? Can I see your hand? Okay, look around, look around. No, hold, no keep your hand up, look around. You ain't the only one. That's not good English, but it's good preaching. <laughs> so in other words, I just want you to understand, you're not the only one who struggles with faith. We all struggle with faith. The disciples who spent physical time with Jesus were struggling in their faith. And here's what I want to say. We all need to get stronger in our faith. We need to get deeper in our faith. We need to move closer to God. And so I'm just going to tell you, spending time in God's Word makes me have more faith in Him. It allows me to learn I can trust Him more, but i got to spend time in the Word of God. Let me show you a verse of Scripture real quick. Romans 10, 17, probably the most famous verse about the word strengthening faith is right here. Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ, by the word of God. Are y'all, are y'all, in other words, here's what he's saying to me. If I want my faith to get increased, then I need to hear what he says. And I hear what he says by the word of God, by the word of Christ. 
So in other words, if you're not spending time, you're never going to increase your faith if you're not spending time in God's Word. This is the only way this works. So you say, well, I, you know, Jesus says if I just had the faith of a mustard seed, I could say to this mountain, be plucked out of here and moved over here. Right? How many of you like to have that kind of faith? Move mountains. How would you like to have that? Well, listen, the only way you're going to get there is to spend more time in His Word. Because getting time in His Word is hearing what He says, and hearing what He says increases your faith. Is that, is that pretty good? So again, the reason we become anemic in our faith with God, our walk with God, is because we won't spend more time with Him. So let me just challenge you. Spend more time with God. Spend more time with God. Spend more time with God. Read God's Word. This Word is the greatest love letter you'll ever have from, from, from God Himself. It was written, let me say this to you, it was written to you personally. So when I read this word, and he says things like, uh, my plans, I, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you, I just say it like this, Mark, God has plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Because he was saying it to me. Let me say this, all of God's word was said to you. You can just put your name in there because he was saying it to you. But God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Mark, God demonstrated his love for you so much that while, in, in, in that while, we, while I was still a sinner, Jesus died for me. He cared for me that much. Are you all following what I'm saying to you? So again, it, and when I, when I hear that, what I realize is when I begin to personalize it into my own life, it makes me go, I can trust God. I can put more faith in him. I can have the faith of a mustard seed. Is that good? So we need to have this in our life. Turn over to Colossians 3. I had you turn there while I go. Colossians 3. And again, I just want to, I'm, I'm going to read a lot of verses this morning, but I'm trying to strengthen your faith. I want you to move deeper in your faith. So here's what God's Word says. Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of Christ rule where? In other words, I'm going to just say something. You'll never get the peace of Christ ruling in your heart if you're not putting the peace of Christ in. You've got to put the Word of God in. So he says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. And, watch this word, be thankful. Now I told you last weekend, the whole Bible can be summed up in two themes. Okay, Real, I'm, I'm telling you, the whole Bible can be summed up in two themes. And the theme number one is, trust the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, He will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, right? So the first part is, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. The second T that sums up the whole Bible is, be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. By the way, let me just say, being thankful is not natural. Come on, some of you have some demonic children. You know what I'm talking about. By the way, we want to welcome all of our kids in the church today. Thank you for being here. Glad to have all of our fifth Sunday kids with us. But here's what I want you to understand. You have to be taught thankfulness. Mom and dad have to say, now hold on, wait a minute, before you get up from the table, what do we say? May I be dismissed? Yes, and thanks for fixing me the meal. I'm just telling you, we have to learn to be thankful people. And by the way, it's a, it's a lesson we have to learn. Let me say something about the greatest lesson you'll ever learn is how to be thankful to God. God, thank you for everything. This morning, I was so overwhelmed when we were singing. You, you guys know, I do my very best to never be emotional in front of you. I'm just telling you, because... I, I think I've seen too many preachers who are emotional for the purpose of manipulation, and I hate that. I hate it. And so let me just say, I don't, I don't think we should ever manipulate people, and I don't think, I'm, I'm fearful that tears sometimes manipulate you. So I do my very best to not do that in front of you. But I'm telling you, when I was sitting here this morning, we're in worship, and we're singing those songs, and I'm telling you, tears started coming to my cheeks and to my eyes. I had to, when I was walking out of the room, trying to wipe my eyes, I'm thinking, like a woman, you know, yeah. Because I'm just so thankful to God for what he's done for us. None of us deserve this. But he says, be thankful and be thankful and be thankful and be thankful. Listen, I'm just telling you, if you'll learn how to be thankful, the more thankful you are to God, the more it builds your faith. And the way you learn how to be thankful is you read the things that God has done for you. You hear it. You repeat it. Builds your faith in your life. Verse 16 says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you again he's saying the word of god has to dwell within you but the first the first previous it said let it rule in your heart how does it rule in your heart when it begins to richly dwell inside of you that's the reason why we meditate on it day and night 
Because the more we meditate on it, the more it richly gets inside of us. It moves deeper within us. He says, with all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another. By the way, when we talk about admonishing one another, you need to be speaking to one another about verses of Scripture that you're learning. This is the reason why I think life groups are so important. And if you're not in a life group, we, we're taking a break. We're in the summer break, but we're going to kick them back off here. And in a little over a month, we're going to be kicking life groups back off. If you're not in a group, you need to get in a group. Because you know what a group does? A group gives you a place to find some friends that you can talk about the Word of God with. Let me tell you, you need some new friends. I've seen some of your friends. You need some new ones. <laughs> you need someone you can talk and admonish one another through the Word of God. So he says, admonishing one another. And then how do we do it? Uh, <clears throat> this is a good verse for men right here. With Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs <clears throat> okay men you need to sing you need to sing you need li listen i know some of you are like well i can't sing you don't know pastor i just can't sing listen it doesn't say uh if you can sing it says and by the way one verse says that we should make a joyful noise thank god we can make a joyful noise and not sing in tune I, I just think, listen, here's what I want to tell you about that. So say, Pastor, well, I just don't know if I can sing. But listen, it's okay. We're not going to put you on the worship team. <laughs> We're good with that. We're good with you not being able to be on the worship team. I'm, I'm totally good with that. You know, and I know some of you think you can sing because your mama told you you could and she lied to you. <laughs> but you should still make a joyful noise. Right? So I just want to challenge you with that. I'd be a really good Simon Cow, I'm telling you. <laughs> and then singing with what? Singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. I mean, I, listen, we don't sing songs to say we came to church and sang songs. We sing songs to worship God and be thankful. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say something that's so important you hear me about this because Many people come to church to get their tanks refilled. And so I understand why it is you don't worship when you get here. Because you got an empty tank. Listen to me. Fill your tank all week long. Come to church with your tank full. So that when we stand to sing, we're, we're blowing all the fuel we got. <laughs> to thank God. Right? And I don't mind. I do not mind. I love being your pastor, and I love putting more gas in your tank. But listen, I would rather fill your tank from three-quarters back to full than I would to try and get you off of empty. Because when you're on empty, I've got to push you. Okay. And, and I just don't, I don't have the time anymore to push. But so listen, I, and by the way, you know, this is a good word for all of you guys. If you're like my wife, my wife fills her tank. I'm talking about physical tank in her car. She fills her tank. Uh, you know, she'll look at it and she'll go, look, I still got 30 miles to go. <clears throat> I, got a, I got a word of advice for you. It costs the same amount of money to keep it on full as it does empty. You're still going to the same places. Okay, listen to me spiritually. Listen to me. It costs the same amount of money to keep it on full as it does to keep it on empty. The problem is when you're on empty all the time, you're always worried about running out. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Look at verse 17. Again, talking about thankfulness. Verse 17, whatever you do in word, in other words, how, what you're speaking or in your actions. By the way, I want to say something. Actions speak louder than words, but you need to use your words too. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Can we just say thank you to Jesus right now? God, thank you for what you've done for us. We bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for our kids. Thank you for my wife. God, thank you for my church. God, thank you. We love you. Thank you for everything you've done for us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? This is what God's called us to in the church, to speak with our words and our deeds. Now, let me just challenge you. You can't just keep God's word on the inside. It's got to come out of your actions in your life. By the way, something we talk about around here all the time, is I want you to get on the team. I want you to get on the dream team. If you've been here for two years, but you've never got on the dream team, listen, uh, no shame and guilt in Jesus, praise the Lord, but let me shame you just a little bit. Get on the team. <laughs> no shame in Jesus. There is shame in Mark Allen. Anyway, so, but I want to tell you, listen, you're not growing. 
Listen, there comes a point in your life where you're wondering, why aren't I growing up? Spending time in God's Word. It's because you're not letting it go through your deeds. So get on the team and make a difference in people's lives. All right, watch that. By the way, say, how do I do that? If you're here and you're brand new, we, we do a class called Growth Track. You probably heard it in our announcements this morning. We don't have it this weekend. The fifth Sundays, we don't do Growth Track. It gives some of our team members a break. So, but we'll start it up again next week, and it's four weeks, and you can do it after every service. So get on the team. That's how you get on the team is go to Growth Track. By the way, one of the things I love about Growth Track is they're going to tell you what your spiritual gifts are. They're going to tell you what your natural giftings are, and they're going to tell you what you're best suited for. It's going to help you to know how to serve. All right. And then the next week, they're going to come back and tell you how to develop your leadership. And I teach in that class. So I'll be looking for you. It's on video, but I'll be looking for you. <laughs> Psalms 119, verse 15 says, I will meditate on your precepts, and I'll regard your ways. You only do that when you're spending time in God's Word. And I shall delight in your statutes. And I shall not forget your word. Listen, the reason we forget is because we didn't spend enough time in it. Spend some time in God's word. Watch this, Psalms 119, verse 47. By the way, best book of the entire, best chapter in the entire Bible on spending time in God's word is Psalms 119. Go take some time this week to read it. In fact, I would challenge anyone here to read through Psalm 119 in five minutes. <clears throat> so, longest chapter in the Bible but isn't it interesting the longest chapter in the Bible is about reading God's word the longest chapter uh, Psalm 119 verse 47 says I shall delight in your commandments which I love and I shall lift my hands to your commandments which I love and I will meditate on your statutes remember the word to your servant in which you have made me hope this is my comfort in my affliction that your word has revived me. And here's what he's saying. He's not saying you'll have no affliction. What he's saying is in the midst of affliction, his word becomes your comfort. What most people do is when they're in affliction, they run from God and the things of God and the word of God. And what he says is I ran to the word of God and it was my comfort in the middle of my tragedy that I was going through. And he, and he finishes it out and says, and what I found out was the more I ran to God's word, the more it revived me. The more it gave me a life to be able to go through the tragedy. Is that good? So we need God's word. We need God's word. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1 says, My son, this is Solomon, My son, if you will receive my words and treasure my commands within you, make your ears attentive to wisdom. Incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, if you lift your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver... And you search for her as hidden treasures. Isn't it interesting? Solomon's saying you, it's, a, it's a choice in your life that you have to choose to run after this. You have to discipline yourself to seek her, to search it out. If you'll do these things, verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 5 says, Then you will discern the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. In other words, you, you, listen, it, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. But listen, if you're not listening, especially to the word of God, you'll never understand him. And there's another way to say that. I still believe God speaks. I believe he speaks today. I believe he is speaking to some of you even right now while I'm speaking. That the Holy Spirit is talking to you in your spirit about your own self. But here's what, you're gonna, here's what I'm going to say to you. You'll never know if it's God's voice or not if you don't know what he sounds like. So the only way you're going to know what he sounds like is to spend time with him in his word to hear what he sounds like. It's the reason why my wife, I don't have to look at my phone to see who it is. I pick up my phone, answer it, I hear her voice. I know what she sounds like because I spent time with her. Uh, I, I can hear my wife on the other side of the house call out. I know who it is. I know that it's my wife. Uh, I have a daughter who lives in my home. Here's what I want you to understand. I understand my daughter's voice. I know my wife's voice because I've spent so much time with them. I have a son in my home. When he cries out to his father, I hear his voice. I know who it is immediately because I've spent so much time with him. Listen to me. You need to spend that much time with God so that when he cries out to you, you know it's him. You need to spend time in God's word. Well, uh, so here's what I want to do. I've been challenging you every single week. Spend time in God's Word. Study God's Word. And so we've been using the Olive Tree app. So I want to challenge you to use the Olive Tree app. And so here it is. We'll make it bigger. There you go. So here is the Olive Tree app. 
And so here's what I would like for you to do. We're going to look at Proverbs chapter 30 this morning. And again, I'm going to show you, I'm going to try and use all the techniques that we have learned to close out this series this morning to help you understand this passage. All right, so watch this. We're going to do this pretty quick. So I'm going to read uh, out of the New American Standard Version. And the reason I do that is because that's the version that I have Strong's in. So whatever version you buy Strong's in is the version you ought to use. So I, so I say this, the words of Agur, the son of Jekai, the oracle. Someone came up to me this morning and they said, you know, I read, I'm really struggling with 1 Kings. Been reading 1 Kings. Been really struggling with it. Because how do you pronounce all those names? And so what I said was, just pronounce it really fast. No one will know any difference. They don't know that you don't know. So anyway, <laughs> the man declares to Ithel, to Ithel, and to you call. How would you like to have those names as children? You know what I mean? <laughs> all right, so. So he, this is a man who's, right, by the way, I don't have time to show you why I know this, but one of the things, if you'll have a commentary, you can go and read, who is a gur. The problem is, no one really knows. But he says something amazing. So a gur, Solomon wrote most of the Proverbs, but a, two or three of them were written by some other men. And so a gur starts to write some things. He's writing them to his children, to his sons. And he says, surely I am more stupid than any man. That's exactly what you want to write, isn't it? My mom, and, my mom always said, don't call people stupid, don't call people stupid, but here's what's great. He didn't call other people stupid, he said, I'm stupid. So here, here's what, another way to say that, pretty humble man, that he could look at himself and realize, I'm not that smart. You know what he did know? You, know, you might be here today and think, I'm not that smart. You know what he did know? He knew the Lord of the universe, Amen. which made him pretty smart. So he's trying to pass that on to his children. He says, I do not have the understanding of a man, neither have I learned wisdom, nor do I have the knowledge of the Holy One. I don't have any of this knowledge. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand this completely. Watch verse 4, and he asks four questions. Who has ascended into heaven and ascended? Hmm, wonder who that might be. Who has ascended to heaven and descended? Okay, I want you to catch this real quick, because if you know the New Testament, you're going to find out that Jesus has ascended and descended. This was written hundreds of years before Jesus came. So here's a stupid man who had the sense to say, i tell you where the answer is, it rests in the Messiah who hasn't even come yet, but I'm believing he will. Here's question two, who has, who has gathered the winds in his fist? This narrows down this list quite a bit. Have you ever tried to grip the wind is, winds in your hands? Well, there's only one who can control the wind. Remember, it was Jesus who was on a boat who said, when the winds were blowing and the tempest was coming, that Jesus said, peace be still, and the winds obeyed. Amen. Who has gathered the winds in his fist? This is a man who's speaking about this before Jesus has even come. This ought to blow your thinking a little bit. He says, who has wrapped the waters in his garment? Hmm, wonder who walked on the waters. Are y'all seeing this? And if that doesn't convince you, Proverbs 30 says, who has established all the ends of the earth? Who made this place? What is his name? Or his son's name? <laughs> He's wondered about the Son of God. Every, surely you know it. Come on, surely. You, in other words, I'm not really asking these questions. You ought to know it, exclamation point. You ought to just dig down inside of yourself and know there has to be a God, that this world didn't just happen. That, listen, for all the scientists who say millions and billions and billions and millions and billions doesn't understand that nothing's impossible with God, that God can do this, and it's God who started all this, and it's His Son who redeems us from all of this. And verse 5 says every word of God is tested. Every word of God is tested. He is a shield of those who take refuge in Him. That's what we've been talking about this whole series, getting into God's Word because it becomes a shield and a refuge for you. And listen, let me just say something about God's Word. It's tested, it's tried, and it's true. And then watch this. I love this. Do not add to His words or he'll, He will reprove you and you'll be proved a liar. Okay, a couple of things you can do here. Good, good place to do this. Open up your Bible commentary, ones that I like to use. It's called the Bible Knowledge Commentary, and read about it. It's really good. But I, what I'd like to do this morning is I'd like to read this in two more translations. And this is why it's important to read a lot of different translations. So if I open up my library and I hit the little Bible books over here, 
it brings up all the books that I have on here. And this is what's called the recents. These are the recent ones that I've opened up. And I'd like to read this again for you in the Passion Translation and also want to read in the Message Translation, okay? So let me, let me start by reading it in the Passion Translation, all right? So if I open it up in the Passion Translation and I go back, I say I'm going to go back. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Okay. So he says this. He says, these are the collections of sayings of the prophet Agur. And I'm going to just skip down. Verse 2. God, I'm so weary and I'm worn out. I wonder if any of you feel that way. I'm so weary and I'm worn out. I feel more like a beast than a man. I was made in your image, but I lack understanding. I've yet to learn the wisdom that comes from the full and intimate knowledge of you, the Holy One. Skip. Who is, who is it that travels back and forth from, heavenly realm, from the heavenly realm to the earth? Who controls the wind as it blows and holds it in his fist? Who tucks the rain into the cloak of his clouds? Who stretches out the skyline from one vista to the other? What is his name? And what is the name of his son? Who can tell me? Every promise from the faithful God is pure and proves to be true. He is wrapped around, he is a wraparound shield of protection for all of his lovers, those who are in love with him, who runs to hide in him. Never add to his word or he'll have to rebuke you to prove that you're a liar. Is that pretty good? It's a totally different way to say that, but doesn't that mean something to you? Okay, let's do it one more time. Let me get back there. Okay, I'm going to change again. We're going to go back up here to our books and I want to open up the message translation. Now listen to this. This is really good. Watch this. The skeptic swore there is no God. <laughs> Some of us have been caught in that trap. You were a skeptic. But listen, let me tell you what God's here to do is to, un to reveal to you that he does exist. The skeptic said there is no God. Verse 2, he says, he says no God, I can, do, I can do anything I want. Verse 2, I am, I am more animal than human. So-called human intelligence escapes me. I flunked wisdom. Let me help you here. Verse 3, I flunked wisdom. There is no God. I flunked wisdom. Yeah, let me tell you how you can flunk the test of God is to believe there is no God. But he said, I thought there was no God, and then I realized there must be a God, and I flunked wisdom. Here's the great thing about this. You can flunk wisdom and get wisdom when you come to him. So he says, I see no evidence of a holy God. He says, has anyone ever seen anyone climb into heaven and take charge? Has grabbed the winds and controlled them, gather the rains in his bucket, stake out the ends of the earth? Just tell me his name. Tell me the names of his sons. Come on now, tell me. Watch this. Here's how the believer replied. The be believer replied, every promise of God proves true. He protects everyone who runs to him for help. So don't second guess him. He might take you to task and show you up on your lies. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? Here's all I want you to know. God's real. God's real. God's powerful. And I want you to know something. You can trust him. You can trust him. You can trust him. Well, Father, today we love you. And we want to bless your name. Thank you, God, that we have this opportunity today to come into your presence, to honor you, to bless you to give you the preeminence of this place this morning. And Father, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you. We want to thank you. And so Father, right now we take an opportunity to spend some time in prayer and talk to you. And I ask Holy Spirit, will you speak to our hearts? Will you speak to our lives? Father, for every person in this room, maybe they're struggling in a marriage situation. Or Father, this morning maybe someone's struggling in a job situation or in a financial situation. I pray, Father, that you will prove every other man a liar and prove yourself to be faithful in their circumstances. And we ask for the blessings of God as they seek you, as they search you out, to truly find you. That it'll be a life-changing event. We believe you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to take one last time to this thank God. We're going to sing this song, and as we're singing it, I want you just to thank God. I'm, I'm telling you, step outside yourself for just a minute. I'm talking about, let's not rush out of here. I'm, I'm telling you, listen, please, let's worship God. Let's thank God. Had to be good to us. And if you need prayer, 
for any reason. We have a God who answers prayer, and we want to put a little faith into your life and watch God change some circumstances. So if you need prayer for any reason, come on. We want to pray for you this morning. You come right now. While our prayer team's coming, you come. Just step out and come. Let us pray for you, and let's worship him, and let's thank him.